Celestial mechanics is the branch of astronomy that deals with the motions of objects in outer space. Historically, celestial mechanics applies principles of physics classical mechanics to astronomical objects, such as stars and planets, to produce ephemeris data. As an astronomical field of study, celestial mechanics includes the sub-fields of orbital mechanics, which deals with the launching and orbits artificial satellites, and lunar theory, a specialty which deals with the complications of the orbit of the Moon. Modern celestial mechanics tends to divide between five broad fields of study. Trajectories of artificial satellites astrodynamics. Motions of major planets, minor planets, and natural satellites in the solar system and other stellar systems and widely spaced multiple star systems planetary dynamics. The motion of component stars and their planetary systems in closely spaced multiple star systems and globular clusters astrodynamics and stellar dynamics. Flow of stars within and among the bodies of large galaxies, dwarf galaxies, and globular clusters stellar dynamics and galactic dynamics. Motions of galaxies and intergalactic dust and gas within galaxy clusters computational astrophysics all of the above fields overlap, but are sometimes treated as separate, especially the study of the motion of stars within galaxies and interactions between whole galaxies, which both tend to rely heavily on fluid mechanics whole stars being particles of the fluid. History Modern analytic celestial mechanics started with Isaac Newton's Principia of 1687. The name, celestial mechanics, is more recent than that. Newton wrote that the field should be called, rational mechanics. The term, dynamics, came in a little later with Gottfried Leibniz, and over a century after Newton, Pierre Simon Laplace introduced the term, celestial mechanics. Prior to Kepler there was little connection between exact, quantitative prediction of planetary positions, using geometrical or arithmetical techniques, and contemporary discussions of the physical causes of the planet's motion. <laughs> <laughs> Johannes Kepler Johannes Kepler (1571–1630) was the first to closely integrate the predictive geometrical astronomy, which had been dominant from Ptolemy in the second century to Copernicus, with physical concepts to produce a new astronomy based upon causes or celestial physics in 1609. His work led to the modern laws of planetary orbits, which he developed using his physical principles and the planetary observations made by Tycho Brahe. Kepler's model greatly improved the accuracy of predictions of planetary motion, years before Isaac Newton developed his law of gravitation in 1686. <laughs> Isaac Newton Isaac Newton, the 25th of December 1642 to the 31st of March 1727, is credited with introducing the idea that the motion of objects in the heavens, such as planets, the sun, and the moon, and the motion of objects on the ground, like cannon balls and falling apples, could be described by the same set of physical laws. In this sense, he unified celestial and terrestrial dynamics. Using Newton's law of universal gravitation, proving Kepler's laws for the case of a circular orbit is simple. Elliptical orbits involve more complex calculations, which Newton included in his Principia. <laughs> Joseph Louis Lagrange After Newton, Lagrange, the 25th of January 1736 to the 10th of April 1813, attempted to solve the three-body problem, analyzed the stability of planetary orbits, and discovered the existence of the Lagrangian points. Lagrange also reformulated the principles of classical mechanics, emphasizing energy more than force and developing a method to use a single polar coordinate equation to describe any orbit, even those that are parabolic and hyperbolic. This is useful for calculating the behavior of planets and comets and such. More recently, it has also become useful to calculate spacecraft trajectories. Topic: <inaudible> Simon Newcomb. Simon Newcomb, the 12th of March 1835 to the 11th of July 1909, was a Canadian-American astronomer who revised Peter Andreas Hansen's table of lunar positions. 
In 1877, assisted by George William Hill, he recalculated all the major astronomical constants. After 1884, he conceived with A. M. W. Downing a plan to resolve much international confusion on the subject. By the time he attended a standardization conference in Paris, France in May 1886, the international consensus was that all ephemerides should be based on Newcomb's calculations. A further conference as late as 1950 confirmed Newcomb's constants as the international standard. <laughs> Albert Einstein Albert Einstein, the 14th of March 1879 to the 18th of April 1955, explained the anomalous precession of Mercury's perihelion in his 1916 paper The Foundation of the General Theory of Relativity. This led astronomers to recognize that Newtonian mechanics did not provide the highest accuracy. Binary pulsars have been observed, the first in 1974, whose orbits not only require the use of general relativity for their explanation, but whose evolution proves the existence of gravitational radiation, a discovery that led to the 1993 Nobel Physics Prize. <laughs> <laughs> examples of problems Celestial motion, without additional forces such as thrust of a rocket, is governed by gravitational acceleration of masses due to other masses. A simplification is the n-body problem, where the problem assumes some number n of spherically symmetric masses. In that case, the integration of the accelerations can be well approximated by relatively simple summations. Examples Four-body problem, spaceflight to Mars for parts of the flight the influence of one or two bodies is very small, so that there we have a two- or three-body problem, see also the patched conic approximation. Three-body problem, quasi-satellite, spaceflight to, and stay at a Lagrangian point in the case that n equals two, two-body problem, the situation is much simpler than for larger n. Various explicit formulas apply, where in the more general case typically only numerical solutions are possible. It is a useful simplification that is often approximately valid. Examples A binary star, e.g., Alpha Centauri approximately, the same mass A binary asteroid, e.g., 90 Antiope approximately, the same mass A further simplification is based on the standard assumptions in astrodynamics which include that one body, the orbiting body, is much smaller than the other, the central body. This is also often approximately valid. Examples Solar system orbiting the center of the Milky Way A planet orbiting the Sun A moon orbiting a planet a spacecraft orbiting Earth, a moon, or a planet in the latter cases the approximation only applies after arrival at that orbit. Topic. Perturbation theory Perturbation theory comprises mathematical methods that are used to find an approximate solution to a problem which cannot be solved exactly. It is closely related to methods used in numerical analysis, which are ancient. The earliest use of modern perturbation theory was to deal with the otherwise unsolvable mathematical problems of celestial mechanics. Newton's solution for the orbit of the Moon, which moves noticeably differently from a simple Keplerian ellipse because of the competing gravitation of the Earth and the Sun. Perturbation methods start with a simplified form of the original problem, which is carefully chosen to be exactly solvable. In celestial mechanics, this is usually a Keplerian ellipse, which is correct when there are only two gravitating bodies say, the Earth and the Moon, or a circular orbit, which is only correct in special cases of two-body motion, but is often close enough for practical use. The solved, but simplified problem is then perturbed. To make its time rate of change equations for the object's position closer to the values from the real problem, such as including the gravitational attraction of a third, more distant body, the Sun. The slight changes that result from the terms in the equations, which themselves may have been simplified yet again, are used as corrections to the original solution. Because simplifications are made at every step, the corrections are never perfect, but even one cycle of corrections often provides a remarkably better approximate solution to the real problem. There is no requirement to stop at only one cycle of corrections. A partially corrected solution can be reused as the new starting point for yet another cycle of perturbations and corrections. 
In principle, for most problems the recycling and refining of prior solutions to obtain a new generation of better solutions could continue indefinitely, to any desired finite degree of accuracy. The common difficulty with the method is that the corrections usually progressively make the new solutions very much more complicated, so each cycle is much more difficult to manage than the previous cycle of corrections. Newton is reported to have said, regarding the problem of the Moon's orbit, "...it causeth my head to ache." This general procedure, starting with a simplified problem and gradually adding corrections that make the starting point of the corrected problem closer to the real situation, is a widely used mathematical tool in advanced sciences and engineering. It is the natural extension of the guess, check, and fix method used anciently with numbers. See also Astrometry is a part of astronomy that deals with measuring the positions of stars and other celestial bodies, their distances and movements. Astrodynamics is the study and creation of orbits, especially those of artificial satellites. Celestial navigation is a position-fixing technique that was the first system devised to help sailors locate themselves on a featureless ocean. Dynamics of the celestial spheres concerns pre-Newtonian explanations of the causes of the motions of the stars and planets. Ephemeris is a compilation of positions of naturally occurring astronomical objects as well as artificial satellites in the sky at a given time or times. Gravitation Numerical analysis is a branch of mathematics, pioneered by celestial mechanicians, for calculating approximate numerical answers such as the position of a planet in the sky which are too difficult to solve down to a general, exact formula. Creating a numerical model of the solar system was the original goal of celestial mechanics, and has only been imperfectly achieved. It continues to motivate research. An orbit is the path that an object makes, around another object, whilst under the influence of a source of centripetal force, such as gravity. Orbital elements are the parameters needed to specify a Newtonian two-body orbit uniquely. Osculating orbit is the temporary Keplerian orbit about a central body that an object would continue on, if other perturbations were not present. Retrograde motion Satellite is an object that orbits another object known as its primary. The term is often used to describe an artificial satellite as opposed to natural satellites, or moons. The common noun moon not capitalized is used to mean any natural satellite of the other planets. Tidal force The Jet Propulsion Laboratory Developmental Ephemeris is a widely used model of the solar system, which combines celestial mechanics with numerical analysis and astronomical and spacecraft data. Two solutions, called VSOP-82 and VSOP-87 are versions 1 mathematical theory for the orbits and positions of the major planets, which seeks to provide accurate positions over an extended period of time. Lunar theory attempts to account for the motions of the Moon. <laughs> Notes <laughs>